So if you've seen my top 50 movies of 2000, thank you for the watch. Um, but now it's time to get into the top 20 worst films of 2000. And there are plenty of weak, terrible, awful films from 2000. And I'm really glad to start talking about them. As a disclaimer, this is only the 20 worst out of the 109 films that I've seen through 2000. And this is solely my opinion. If you have different opinions, if you feel there are worse movies out there, that's fine by, that's fine by me. Everyone has their own opinion. It would be creepy if you had the same exact opinion as me. Okay, I'm not going to even go into dishonorable mentions for this video because with my top 20, I cover all the films that I give under two stars. And there are two two-star movies that actually make it in my top 20. All right, my number 20 is a Disney film that was a animation, it's a sequel, and it's a straight-to-DVD film. My number 20 is Lady and the Tramp 2, Scamp's Adventure. Now, this is still a two-star movie for me. It's one of those movies I can enjoy watching it for the first time, but then I forget about it and don't really care too much about it. There are still things that work. Overall, all it is is just a reverse of Lady and the Tramp. It really is, just as the kids of the couple, the dog couple. It still has some memorable songs. It still has some neat characters. But overall, all it is is reverse, and it's pretty forgettable. My number 19 is the only Antoine Fuqua film that I actually feel is just eh, and that is Bait. There's really not much I can say about Bait. It has a unique premise. It has some goofy comedy in it. It does have some decent action, but it's just highly forgettable, and I would never care to see it again. Okay, with number 18, we finally get into the films that are one and a half stars or lower. And my number 18 is something that there are some people that really enjoy this movie, but I cannot stand it. It is Ghost Dog, The Way of the Samurai. Alright, Forrest Whitaker is a great actor. He is really great in this movie. There is some acting that is really great. There is some really humorous things in it because, let's face it, how are you going to take something like Ghost Dog, The Way of the Samurai, completely serious? Like, we got Forrest Whitaker, who's like, raised by this mafia, raised into the ways of the samurai, and just becomes a hitman for this mafia in modern day times. How can you not, not take it seriously? But even though there's some comical moments, even though there is some really smart, really good action in this film, it's bogged down with this really boring, really heavy message where it tries to be way too dramatic for its own good and tries to take itself seriously. And it just doesn't work for me. It probably works for some people. There are plenty of people that like this movie and think it's a highly underrated film. But I can't stand it. I'm sorry. Okay, if you've seen my top 10 films of 2000, then I have mentioned this one. My number 17 is Heavy Metal 2000. I love Heavy Metal. I love the anthology style to it. I love the dark and creepy graphic, just plain awesome animation. I love the music. Everything about Heavy Metal is awesome. It's epic. It's amazing. It's what you think something called Heavy Metal should be. Heavy Metal 2000, totally different route. For one, not an anthology at all. So you don't get that little variety that you had in the first one. Second, it is your basic fantasy sci-fi story, revenge story basically. It is the exact, it's the epitome of what you expect in a fantasy revenge film just put into sci-fi. So it's basic. Story's basic, but manageable. It's, it's, it's predictable, but you can kind of enjoy it if you just don't care. Worst part of Heavy Metal 2000, and the only reason why it's not a two-star movie for me, the music. Okay, 
I like modern heavy metal. I like a lot of different rock. I love almost all rock and metal genres. But the songs they use for Heavy Metal 2000 are what was, I guess, popular during the year 2000 when it comes to heavy metal. But it all absolutely sucks. It's like all the screaming, all the metalcore stuff, all the kinds of metal I can't stand. There was only one artist in the entire film. When I'm looking at the credits and I'm seeing all the songs, there's only one artist that I actually recognize, and that was System of a Down. And even then, they used one of the songs I don't like from them. I like System of a Down, but there's very few songs I dislike from them. And, the one, to and one of the songs I dislike from them is the one that they had to put in Heavy Metal 2000. Actually, I don't even remember it in it. It's in the credits. I don't remember it in the thing. Ugh. Heavy Metal 2000. If you love the first Heavy Metal, probably going to hate this one. And like I said, it's the music. It's the songs. It's, that's the only reason it is a half, one and a half star for me. Because the music is awful. My number 16 is a sequel to a film franchise that I feel does have some really good premise to it and there is some promise to this movie unfortunately it's cheaply made because it's a straight to DVD film and sometimes that really hurts it. My number 16 is The Crow Salvation. It has all the right elements to a crow movie. It feels like a crow movie. The villains, the, the mystery, the, the revenge story, it all works. Problem is, it's really, really cheap, and sometimes that really hurts watching it because it's just so bad looking and it's just so poorly directed, edited. It's one of those really bad movies that shows promise, that shows that it could have been a good movie if handled better, if had the, if it had the better budget, but. It doesn't, and so it's number 16 for me. My number 15 film is a film that is universally hated, and it is Dungeons and Dragons. But Dungeons and Dragons is still a one and a half star for me. It still has some promise. There's still some good things about it, some potential that I actually enjoy. Even, even though Marlon Wayans was your stereotypical black guy in this kind of film and does have some negative connotations to his character and his cliched character, I still really felt bad when his character died. That scene was handled really well. Even the main character's cheesy scream, no, didn't harm the, the emotional impact that scene had for me. And while Jeremy Irons is the most cartoony, crazy villain he could ever be in this film, he is by far the most interesting thing in this film, and you gotta love him for that. He goes for it. This over-the-top, sorcerer, crazy, maniacal thing is awesome. Plus, I love dragons. There's a lot of dragons involved. And I can forgive the fault of the movie having not as good CGI because it is a 2000 film. And the dragons do look a little like uh, the Godzilla from um, 1998, or when was it? The one with Matthew Broderick? The, the dragons look like that in the face. <laughs> and when I heard talk of the sequel and what it could have been, I was highly surprised because the sequel sounded like something that could have been good. They just never made it because Dungeons and Dragons was so awful to so many people. And I really wish I could see the sequel because the sequel sounds freaking amazing. The problem is the characters, the environments, the everything about the story felt really cliched to the point where it felt like whoever was making this Dungeons and Dragons, whoever was the Dungeon Master, the Dragon Master, what is it called again? I, I should know because I played Dungeons and Dragons. But the Game Master, whoever the Game Master was, it felt like he was completely unoriginal and had no imagination whatsoever because the th whole film felt like it was cliched and crazy. Alright, my number 14 is a sequel. It is Nutty Professor 2, The Clumps. 
Okay, um, I remember loving this as a kid. Watching it now, it just doesn't age well uh, for me. I still kind of like it. I still have some sort of nostalgia factor to it, towards it. And there really is some heartfelt, deep meaning in it that I can appreciate. There's things I hate about it, there's things I love about it, there's things that just aren't as funny to me anymore now that I'm older, but it's still one and a half stars for me. Alright, mine number 13 is a serial killer movie where the serial killer is Keanu Reeves. What? It's The Watcher. Now, the reason why this is still a one and a half star for me is because this movie really had potential at being a pretty good crime, thriller, serial killer thing. There's some really good stuff in it and some things that are really good imagination-wise. Keanu Reeves is really creepy and really good in this film. He's the best part of this whole film. I think the really the, the problem with this film is the structure and it's not really the structure, it's more along the lines of how they presented the film. Um, instead of giving you the whole backstory ahead of time where they could have easily done it. They could have easily did the whole backstory and the reason why this guy is after Keanu Reeves. They could have done that in one scene and be over and done with it and not have a revelation of it towards the middle of the film because it's one of those things you can predict easily and it really isn't a revelation when it becomes a revelation. I think if they would have stuck with that instead of slowly revealing the character throughout the film, it would have been a way better film. Okay, number 12 is a film that I still have nostalgic feelings towards it, but I still have to give it a one. It is Urban Legends 2 Final Cut. I think one of the things I like about Urban Legends The Final Cut is it has to deal with movie making. I am a fan of movie making and it, I did like the first Urban Legends, so this is the sequel. I like some of the actors in it. Um, but after I watched it again, I didn't. I, I had not realized just how cheesy and awful some of the dialogue and the acting is. It is dreadful. But I think you can still really enjoy it in a really funny, bad movie sort of way. But there is some interesting things in it that I do legitimately like. And, st and because of that, it's still one star for me. Okay, my number 11 for the worst films of 2000 is Dracula 2000. There really isn't much to say about it. It's just Dracula tried to put in a modern age and just not done well enough and done in a boring way. I think the only thing that keeps it from being a half a star and keeps it in the one star range for me is because Gerard Butler kills it as, Dirac as Dracula. He's amazing. I didn't even think he would be Dracula. I was like, this is going to be pretty bad, isn't it? But he really kills it as Dracula and I was surprised by that. And if you don't mind a retelling of Dracula, I think you can enjoy this film. So I think there is some enjoyment that can be had, but for me, it's, it's a one star, and it's nine number 11. So that was my 20 through 11 of worst films of 2000, and that was just my opinion. <laughs>